desire to go anywhere, to teach, to speak. It's not there. It's just wherever there's a call, it's coming out of us and it's pulled out, really. And it's impossible to hold it back. And that's the experience that makes everything happen, but not with a desire to do anything. And it is always given, truly, in a miraculous way. It's, um, it's really amazing. Really amazing. Mm. So it, miracles are involuntary. Mm -hmm. And and involuntary, you know, that means <coughs> that they they really should not be under conscious control, otherwise it's not a miracle. So we really are clueless in this. It's important to be clueless. I mean, she didn't want to organize a tour. I certainly didn't want to organize a tour. Um, and then it's like the characters started coming that we're going to be offering to do that. I just said, well, they're yeah, it's like they have the they're just yeah. answering. They're just <laughs> flowing with their inspiration, yes. and it's like, oh, looks like looks like something like this is coming together. As we're still flying across from Hawaii, I have, I, I knew there was something with LA and something up here, but I, and I saw on Facebook these little flyers flying around, and I, I don't read that stuff. I don't read anymore. Spirit doesn't read. Uh, you know, it's just. So it's like I just see a bunch of these flyers going around, and this is, and then I'm like, okay, something's happening there, and I'm coming across on the plane, really clueless, and then, you know, okay, we just we land, it seemed to pick us up. <laughs> and, you know, there's people there, and, and you know, we're not thinking about taxi cabs or yeah. you know GPSs or those kind of things, you know, location. It's so, okay. Then we pick it, and then it's there, and then there, and then that seems to be this has unfolded. But it was again inspirations, come, 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 and what, and then this place being offered this house for this this size of group. You know, everything's just. I had one pair of pants, one pair of long pants, <laughs> and these aren't them. <laughs> Want to know the story? Well, I come, I, I, I'm in Hawaii in a rainforest. I'm in a rainforest, and I have some short pants and some long pants, and it's a rainforest, though. so it's really moist. It's right by the ocean, and it's really, I mean, it's a thick, humid moisture, it's rainforest moisture. So the clothes, you know, the shirts, the pants, I and mean, I hang up some long pants in there, hardly ever. I, have you ever seen me in long pants in Hawaii? I don't even wear them, but I just stick them in there. Because for a chance that I, one day I'll be going to California and you know to speak at a church or something in Northern California with some wind and something, you know, I said, "Where's the pants?" Where's the pants? So anyway, I go into my, I just grabbed a pair of pants, I put them in there. I go tonight to put on the pair of pants, and they're just so moldy, <laughs> <laughs> right on the crotch, you know, <laughs> just dark stains, you know, and I'm just like. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm like the Google, like, my one, my, probably my one chance in Northern California to wear the one pair of pants that I have, and it's like stains on the crotch, you know, just, so I'm like, so I put them on, I'm like, I don't care, filming the thing, put it up on YouTube, what the heck, I'm a mystic, I'm not interested, take no thought for what you should wear or eat, you know, it doesn't care if there's stains on the crotch, I don't care if it makes it on YouTube or if Craig's zooming in on there and you know, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm into content. I'm into joy. I'm not interested in how things look. So that Mel's just like, hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, so we're talking, we're talking, and, and Dave's there, and, and Christine and Craig have already gone out and everything, and we're talking about it. I said, you know, I can wear shorts. And she said, won't you be cool? I said, I'm not cold. I don't feel cold. I take it go out in San Francisco at night with shorts on me. So I go and I go up and I get my, my shorts that I've worn in there. And then David said, I wonder if you could fit into my pants. <laughs> and I said, huh. So we go upstairs <laughs> and he comes out with this pair of pants. He's asked him what size I am. And I said, and I got my shorts in one hand and he says, try these. So, he gives me these pants and I put them on and I go, look at this! <laughs> <laughs> One pair of pants that I bring all the way from Hawaii, you can't wear them, and then I come in this. In the so, garbage. In the garbage. In your, don't be surprised when you go to, sort of under your sink, you see some 
I'm not saying they're just in pants. <laughs> it's an old relic, a mystic relic. Sell it on eBay. It's just, we threw them away. And the thing was, and he said, you know, those pants always were a little bit big on me. I've lost weight. You, know, you take the pants. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't even have to plan on a clothes that I'm going to wear tonight. Because they showed up poof. Like that. And that's the way the miracle works, you know. It's like anything that you could even seem to need or use is provided. I certainly didn't plan on this. I mean, this was right before we got in the car to come over here. And you know, and then the pants come on. Somebody told me you're going to wear Dave's, it's, uh, the da David's pants, see? I, I still like David. David's pants. Right? It's the Holy Spirit is so humorous. But you're really never without anything. You're never lacking anything. Mm -hmm. You just don't, you can't plan it. Mm -hmm. You can't organize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are two thoughts that are coming to my mind. Is, um, one is that you're only afraid of what you think is, not, uh, that you are separate from. <coughs> and when you realize that it's always, it's really always right in, inside you. It's never outside of you. You really never separate from anything, then you're not afraid of it. You're just afraid of it when you try to make something happen, but when you realize that it's right here and it's going to come out at the perfect time, then you're not scared of it. And I, I feel like the other thing I wanted to say is that it does feel like that we're all activated at certain time for certain purposes. And because we have the idea that everything needs to happen for a reason, or there's always a personal motivation <coughs> in it, because we've learned that, we've really learned to be motivated and have ambition, like David was saying, then we believe that it's how it works, that things happen only if you think them before, if you plan them, if you prepare them, if you prepare yourself for them even. But it's never, the tr it's never like that. It's that when, it's, when the timing has come, poof, it's like you receive the program and suddenly you can do it. And there is no explanation for it. It's only because the mind, the ego, wants explanation for everything and wants understanding that we find reason and we find meaning when, where there isn't. But truly, things are happening always spontaneously. There isn't a reason, for, there isn't a reason for anything to happen. An example is, I've always, I felt like since so many years that I have piano skills inside of me and such a calling for piano and for some months, several years ago or those last years, I had the opportunity to play piano and, and it took me, it was scary, like I had to sit in front of the piano and I went, oh my god, I cannot do that. And it would be difficult and I would have to learn and it would be difficult. And la last month I was in Hawaii and my friend JP just, he, he just bought a new piano and he had this big opening experience again where uh, he just heard a symphony when he bought that piano and when he heard that symphony and he experienced, he, he told me this experience, I felt like I started to cry like crazy. I felt like he was living it for me. And that something deep opened up in me. And I came back to Hawaii and I was like, oh, JP, I want to play piano with you. Like, I really want to sit in front of this piano. And I don't know what happened, but it everything was so easy. And I had just so profound experiences where everything just dissolved. Absolutely everything. It's like the experience was at the end, I am the music. There isn't any separation in anything. But again, there wasn't a trying to make it happen. It's like it was given. I just came back, the piano was there, my friend was there, and we collaborated together, we sat on the piano together, we played whatever we were hearing, and the experience was so profound, and I was crying every time I sit and I play, I cry every time I listen to him, I cry, and that's, that's how the spirit works. Suddenly, I could play piano in four days, I was able to play the first page of Moonlight Sonata from Beethoven. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy! Oh, wow. And I, I played, I played for I don't know four days, maybe six hours, maybe an hour and a half or more, or two hours every day. And I was able to play it, and I'm like, and I'm crying as I'm playing it, and I'm like, my heart is wide open. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing, and and that's it. It's like mm -hmm. I didn't learn, I didn't try. 
there was no effort, it was just the right timing and it came. Mm -hmm. And there's always the right timing for everything. Why is it? Because the script is written. Yeah. There's The thing is that we believe we have to make our life. But life has already happened. And everything is already written and we're just watching a, a script that has already unfolded and that is already mm -hmm. over and done. So there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to reach, there's nothing to achieve. It's just, we just have to rest in the spirit, as the spirit, and be <coughs> open. And that's what prayer is about. It's mm -hmm. just a state of mind of openness to receive all the gift of the spirit, which is truly not in form, <coughs> but it seems to play out and to extend in form. And that's what it is about. And so when the time is right, you're activated, people are coming to you, they are activated, they receive the program in order to coordinate the tour or to teach you piano or whatever it is, and they're all coming to you, or you're going to them and suddenly you feel the synergy and it's like, oh my God, there's something we have to do together and poof, sharing happens and whoa, wow, this is it, let's go. And it's like, like that. It's not you plan it, it's just that it's been given, 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 given. And that is really effortless and that's where you realize that means and ends are together. Because in the moment where you are in the spirit, you realize that there is no separation. So the strain is thinking that it's outside of you and the goal is outside of you and you need to reach it. Mm -hmm. And it's painful mm -hmm. and it's stressful and it's awful. It's really certainly unhappy, mm -hmm. and but when you are in the spirit, when you are in the present moment, you just mm -hmm. absolutely don't care about any of it. You're so content that you just trust and you just know that everything you need is going to be given you. Mm -hmm. And there isn't even an idea you wait because there is no time, so you don't wait. You know that all there is is now and what's happening. And, and whatever is coming your way, you know that it is for the best. And you trust that, that there is a plan that is behind your control, that's going to unfold, that you want it or not, whatever it is. And, and you can relax in that, in that knowing that it's already all taken care of. You are already all taken care of. And mm -hmm. I just have a line from a movie, and um, happy ending. Like, and if it's not the end, it, if, if you're not happy, it's because you're, it's not the end yet. <laughs> so it's really interesting that, yeah. like, there's, you know, just there is a flow of life, and as you get in the flow, that's what, that's the experience you're having. It's like this experience of happiness and, and really total restfulness, and, and things are coming your way. Mm -hmm. But you don't really care about whatever they are, and you don't even expect things coming your way. You just are so full already. And it's the idea of being a person that creates the lack. And so your experience is what? Lack. And more lack and more lack. And so there's a trying to have more to fill the lack. But as long as the lack is there, that's all you feed, the lack. And so in order to come back to wholeness, you just need to align with the spirit. And every moment to choose the spirit and choose the spirit and choose the spirit. And relax in that. Yeah, and ambition in, in our culture, and I would say in most cultures of the world, ambition is a good thing. If you've got it, that's good. If you don't, you're just a lazy, no good, whatever, you know, and it's, it's a, not a, a positive judgment. I remember the first time I saw the movie Gandhi, and I was watching the beautiful long movie and everything, and he was in South Africa and this American journalist was there walking with him. And they were having a nice friendly chat, two friends walking along having a chat. And, and the man, the, the uh, journalist said to, to Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi, you're quite an ambitious fellow. Because he's watching to see an ashram being built down there and a community and everything. And Gandhi turns to him and smiles and says, I hope not. Something in my heart leaped when I heard that, I hope not. That's not capitalism, that's not entrepreneurism, that's not Horatio Alger's, you know, come up from your bootstraps and make something out of your life and everything. I hope not. I hope not. That's Gandhi. I adored Gandhi. I thought, this guy's onto it. Nonviolence. Stand for your principles. Go to prison. 
If, if, if it's just the standard principles, you'll go to prison even. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Take me away, you know. I'll stand on my principle and I won't compromise. But you, you may have to put this body into prison, but that's not going to stop this presence of nonviolence and love from spreading throughout the world. He had no problem going to jail. That inspired me. I thought, yeah, I, I hope I can live my principles in my heart as, as strong as that, because that inspires me. So what, how do you live your life if you have no ambition? Well, why would you live a life without ambition unless you realize, like Armel saying, that it's all here and now. Everything is accomplished in this moment, because this world was over long ago, and we're just through the ego, reliving, watching this image making. It's idolatry. It's just rehashing, reliving images over and over and over. The same cycles and patterns that they talk about in psychotherapy, or even in past life regressions. The same patterns just repeat over and over and over. Jesus said history wouldn't even exist if you didn't keep making the same mistake in the present. <laughs> well, that's telling us it, the solution's got to be really simple. If we can just live in the present, then that's the end of the ego. No more threat. So, I've had this experience where I see that everything's unified and there's no inner, there's no outer, there's no David, and there's no world outside of David. It's all just unified perception. That's what a healed mind is. It's unified perception. It's holistic. It's that everything is quantum. What do we have? Isaac Newton taught us Newtonian physics, you know? It was all about waves. It was all about empiricism. It was all about measure the things in linear time and deduce your science from what you discover from linear time. Uh, uh, Immanuel Kant, a great philosopher, comes along and says, no, what if, what we, how do we know what we know? What if we know it before perception, before time? What if our knowing is a priori, before the senses? What if we've known everything, all inside our heart already, and this perceptual time thing has just been trying to fool us that we don't know anything? You know, and then when we believe it, then we think we know something about time, and then we forget what we could always know in our hearts. So, once I discovered that it was all quantum, everything was just all completely connected. Everything was all mind. There was nothing outside of mind. Then I thought, that, that's the healing. That, that, th there's nothing outside of me, so I need not pursue, mm -hmm. seek anything outside of me. Because there isn't anything. My mind is all-encompassing, encompasses everything. I remember years ago, I seemed to be up at a hermitage in the woods of, of Michigan, and my friend Thomas <coughs> came up to visit me. And he visited me up there, and, and he said, listen, I got this great idea. I was just out in California, I went to Dan Millman's place, or wherever it was, Dan Millman's center. He said, I got this goal of a spiritual retreat center. I'm going to build a spiritual retreat center. If any of us have had ideas like that, spiritual <laughs> retreat center? I had those ideas too. So he's like, and I, I saw how he runs things, I saw his organization, I saw the way he teaches, and this and this. I studied my time when I was with Dan Millman, you know, the way the Peace Warrior was, this is fantastic. I'm all, he's all excited about this project and everything. So we take a walk in the woods and everything, and I said, we stopped for, for lunch, I said, well, that's fantastic. You did it. He said, did what? I said, you did it. You did the spiritual retreat center idea. He said, no, I, I just had the ideas for it. I didn't, I mean, I had to, it's going to take a lot of work and time. And I said, no, you've already done it. If you can think about it, it's already done. That'll take your ambition <coughs> out of you. If you can think about it, it's already done. Try that experiment with Google. Sometimes you ever have an idea which you think is the most inspirational, <laughs> brand new idea, oh, the first time anybody's ever thought about it on the planet, you know? And you go, I'm just going to type this into Google. And then you go, huh. <laughs> 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 the phone starts coming up right on. You go, huh. Nothing new under the sun. Uh, so anyway, Thomas, he's like, I, I, I don't know. I thought, I thought that was a good idea. But now you said I've done it. So he went off. So then he came back, and I see him a couple of years later, and he comes and visits me. I'm again, I'm meditating in some of the woods somewhere. And he comes in, and he's like, I got the most exciting thing. I'm going to make spiritual movies. 
spiritual, metaphysical movies to help people awaken. I mean, I'm going to bring all these ideas from the Course and I'm going to bring them into movies and they're going to be great and they're going to reach millions of people and they'll, they'll show and demonstrate the thing and they're going to go, on, on, on. and I said, wow, but it's a good idea, but, but you've already done that. He said, what do you mean? I said, you've done it. You thought of it and so you've done it. He said, no, no, I have not the scripts yet. I do not have the actors and actresses lined up. I do not, I have not put this thing together yet. You don't understand. I said, no, you've done it already. He said, what do you mean I've done it? I said, you've done, you did E.T. You did The <laughs> Matrix. You, you did, you know, I just went through like ten movies, you know, Groundhog Day. I said, you did Groundhog Day. You, and I said, all these kind of mystical, mystical. He's like, no, no, E.T. was Spielberg. <laughs> no, it wasn't me. It was, Matrix was the Wachowski brothers. He was trying to convince me that there was other people who had done these things. But when you bring everything back to the present moment, just see how powerful the mind is. Our mind was created by God, and even through this egoic sense of linear time, it hasn't changed anything. Our mind is that powerful. We've done it all. Didn't Barry Manlow write a song? I write the songs that make the whole world sing. Mm -hmm. I am music. Yeah. <laughs> I am music. People said, how arrogant. And he's like, no, no, it's, that's, that's the experience we're talking about, that your mind is all-encompassing. And anything that you perceive, you, you see a, a great actor, a great actress, you hear a beautiful song, you couldn't even perceive that song. Those songs that you played <laughs> at Strawberry, yeah. you can't even perceive it unless it's not already inside of you. Everything that we witness in the world is just a reflection of what we have within us. And, and that's empowering. Beethoven's empowering, Mozart is empowering, but it's not them. They weren't the geniuses out there somewhere in history. It's all mind. And once we can, then we can relax and just let whatever comes, come in a sense of joy and ease and laughter and happiness without trying to compare it, contrast it, mm -hmm. trying to achieve something. You know, all these movies about Black Swan and all these movies about <coughs> the, the pressure of comparison, the pressure of competition. Even with The Course in Miracles, as people were saying, well, you know, don't you see that there's a competition between Course in Miracles teachers? You know, there's only so many students to go around, and so many this and this and this. What? That's bizarre! That's bizarre, you know, to think of, of competition between teachers. You know, there's, there is no competition going on because everything is unified. It can't be any other way. It just has to be that way. <laughs>